Good day, mate. You called the yeah, ambulance? Yeah, my name is Ence. I've just got a bit of a... So we're going to start with the primary survey you can see here. I've walked in and my patient's talking to me. So I, and they're sitting up, and so I know that I've got an airway, breathing, and circulation. So I'm really happy with my primary survey just by virtue of the fact that Jens is there talking to me. Move into my um, assessment now. Introduce myself, obviously, and now I'm just trying to get a bit of background about what's happening. So this is the events leading up to, let's say. Nervous because my dad previously had a heart attack mowing the lawn. Right, okay. Yeah. You can see that Jens is willing to give me a fair bit of information here. It's important to sort of uh, retain what the patient's going to tell you at this point, but remember that you might have to come back to it later as well. So I'll, I'll take a couple of vital signs. And here you can see, rather than let Jens keep talking, I'm going to go back to my standard clinical approach. So I'm going to jump in now with my vital sign survey. When I breathe, it feels a little bit weird. It feels like a bit of a dull pain. It, it actually just dull. was uh, as I... You can hear dollars happening here, so we'll expect description, onset location, other signs and symptoms, relief and severity. We're trying to pick up the lawnmower as yeah. opposed to pushing it. Yeah, I was pushing it for about 10 or 15. And there's my onset. Move it. Awesome. Okay, yeah. and you've pointed here on your chest. Just here, yeah, just in the chest area. And location? No. No? Nothing. So if you were going to put your finger right in the middle of where the pain is? Right there. Right there. There. Okay. All right, and how do your arms feel? Are they feeling normal? No, it feels fine. Your jaw? Jaw fine. Neck? Neck, nothing. This is other signs and symptoms. Feel nauseous? No. Nah. Okay. No. Nah. Um, short of breath? No, nah, I don't know why I'm just exaggerating, but it just felt because of my pre previous history and it just happened straight away. No, so, I get it, man. Yeah. It's stressful. Yeah. It's um, understandable. So anything yeah. else apart from that pain, if I took nah. that away, would there be anything else? Nothing else. Just oh, this. Okay. Yeah. And the pain came on while you were lifting it. Has it changed at all since then? Has anything made it better? No. Nah, just sitting here. Just. And finally, we're looking at relief. It, particularly yeah. if I actually push it, it feels a bit weird. Okay. So it doesn't feel as bad when it initially happened, but okay. I'm just phoned you just in case. Yeah, so a little bit better, but not yeah. gone away. Not gone away, no. So tell me, Ian, zero, no pain at all, 10, worst pain. And here's my measure of severity. Six or seven. I broke my ankle a few years ago. That was probably about a nine or 10 out of 10. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it was about six or seven. Ankle. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll deal with the pain in, in yeah. two seconds then. Tell me some more silly questions. Do you have any allergies? Uh, hay fever, one Time for my ample. So allergies, medications, last ins and outs, uh, past medical history and events leading up to. Um, and you're on fexafenidine. Yes. Anything else? Nothing. Nothing else? Nothing. Past medical history? Uh, all broke all my good broke my ankle. Yeah. Paras gave me some um, methoxyfluorine, green green whistle. Oh, yeah? How'd that go for um, you? That yeah, work? it was actually fine. Yeah, I had to get it fixed in the, in the hospital. Yep. And so. otherwise all good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you see a doctor regularly? Good to confirm that here because we know that we're probably going to come back to methoxy. It's fine, I do a bit of running, do okay. a bit of this. So your doctor checks your heart and says, yep, your heart's yeah, he ticked off? Yeah, he says it's fine, yes. Sweet. But my, my and remember, patients will tell you we're A-OK, -okay, but when you start to assess for individual systems that you might find that there is actually a medical history in there. So it's important to just confirm everything. It's 50. 50, OK. Oh. All right. Are, we, are you a smoker? No. No? Okay. No, that's why I've got a bit of a front. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. And your lungs are okay? Yeah. No asthma? CPD, no, nothing. 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 No strokes or anything nothing. like that? Okay. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. No I almost worries. feel like I hopefully I'm not exaggerating this whole story, no, but just in that's case. that's fine. We've just got to check yeah. everything out. Um, you're eating and drinking normally? Um, yeah. Fine. Okay. An hour ago, I probably had a leftover pizza and some, uh, some orange juice. Yep. That was it. Okay, cool. Uh, All right, no worries. And so we're saying mowing the lawn, so nothing was wrong. Always good to summarise at the end, just to make sure you got the story down. That pain, yeah. it's gotten a little bit better, but it hasn't gone yeah, It was a hot, sweaty day as usual, yep. mowing the lawn. Okay. So good, yeah. Jens, do you mind? I'll take some vital signs. Go for it. That's all right. So I'm going to start with my perfusion status assessment. So, you know, I can already see his skin and I've been able to assess his conscious state. So I'll do a blood pressure and a, and a pulse and just make sure that he's being well perfused. I might just do a blood palpation, so we'll just rest your arm there. You've got a good strong heartbeat. I can feel it ticking away. It's nice and normal. That's good to see. When you're doing your patient assessments, it's really important that you take your time with everything you're doing. You really want to make sure that you're getting accurate results because you're going to use these to define your management. So you can see I'm just taking my time getting my blood pressure there. Excellent. 120. Textbook. And I've forgotten my watch, Jens. I'm going to borrow yours. 
So again, they, this forms part of my perfusion status assessment. So with the information I've gathered here, I'm able to confirm whether or not the patient's getting enough oxygen delivered to his tissues. Excellent, 70, that's good. So look, you, your heart rate's normal, no. your blood pressure's normal at, at 120. I can see your skin looks fine, you, like, nice color, pink, um, and your conscious state is normal. So perfusion wise, that's a good sign. It means your heart is pumping the blood around your body, no problems at all. Oh, okay. Obviously, I'm just checking conscious status here. You already told me your name. Do you know what day it is, Jens? Yeah, Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. So, um, conscious state-wise... Move fine. into respiratory status assessment. So, I mean, Jens is talking to me and I can see he's breathing normally, so I'm happy with that. But we really want to listen to the chest. And if you'll watch here, we're going to assess for three things with our chest oscillation. So, you can see left equals right apices to basis and listening for any adventitious sounds, so anything abnormal. Again, take your time with um, your respiratory status assessment. Really listen to the breathing, two cycles if possible, um, and just make sure that your your patient is is actually getting enough oxygen into their system. And remember as well, we're doing this in real time to show you how long it should take you. Cool. So your lungs are all normal. The left equals right. I can hear the air going all the way in and out and it's completely normal sounds, Jens, which is great. Um, so I'm not too worried about your... And now moving into my secondary survey. So I've done my vital sign survey, which is looking at my perfusion, respirations and conscious state. And now I'm just going to gather the last bits of information in the secondary survey. So obviously the temp, I've got his sats on there. And just remember, you don't have to do every part of it. It's sort of a checklist that you can consider and just use the bits you want. And in this case, obviously, I've said don't need BGL. Um, so it's up to you to determine what you actually do. Because it's your heart, I'll just check out your ECG as well. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jens. And we'll just let that turn on and take it away. Look at that, that's your heart. And that's excellent, I can see P, Q, R, S, T. All nice and regular, heart rate matches. We'll just flick through the... Um, so with all the information that we've gathered now, we're starting to get a really complete picture of the patient. I like to do a bit of a summary at this point. I'll take that off you, sorry. Right now your heart's looking great. Um, all your obs are in the normal range, so I might just try and get to the bottom and of this it. is me doing all my cognitive checkpoints. So I've got a pretty good idea what I think's happening, um, but I want to walk to that slowly. I want to make sure that I'm excluding everything. Um, and obviously with the payoff principle, you know, cardiac being one of the worst. Now I'm getting into the nitty gritty and try and figure out exactly what's happening. Right, take a deep breath and sort of puff your chest out. Does that change it at all? No. If I press on it, you're saying that hurts just, a little just bit. A little bit of a dull a feeling bit. there, yeah. If I did that on the other side of you, does that change? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing there. All right. And this arm here... So obviously with this particular patient, but I guess you could use this for any type of patient, but we're trying to exclude, you know, we're thinking what could this be that's causing these symptoms and then try and exclude things. Now, all the cardiac stuff was relatively normal for me. I mean, this patient screamed cardiac when you walked in the door. But the more we talked to him and assessed him, the less cardiac issues he seemed to have and, and few risk factors as well. Um, and so now we're thinking, well, you know, there's lots of things in there where he's pointed where he's got pain. Um, he's obviously, he's got ribs, he's got lungs, muscles, all those sorts of things. Um, he was doing, you know, a manual handling task at the time. So now assessing that and trying to figure out if we can reproduce that pain with a certain movement. And then obviously, once you've done that, again, I like to summarise it and explain to the patient what I think is going on. It just helps make sure you avoid so, errors. We'd have to do some more tests in hospital. Yeah. What I do think is the way that you're moving that arm and the pain that happens when you move it, 
potentially you might have torn a muscle or something in your chest, maybe pec. Don't know. Um, I, and this is me talking myself into my management section. So I've done all my assessment. I've determined what I think is going on and what I don't think is going on. And now I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do about it. So obviously in this case, we're going to provide pain relief. We're not going to go down a cardiac pathway. Oh, yeah, so I got the paras came on the field and they took me away and gave me some, what I knew, the green whistle or green Green relay. whistle, yeah. yeah. It worked. All right. You see here I'm doing my um, pre-administration checks. Milliliters expires 2023. Um, you've had this before now. Do you have, you've told me you had no allergies. Oh, sorry, you were... Just, um, fixed, just fever. a fever, yeah, that's yep. it. Checking all my contraindications. With your kidneys or your liver? Not that I know about. No, ever, yeah. I've never had problems with anesthetics or anything like no, that. No, I've been to the past. dentist. They fixed this apparently. I had that before, no okay. issues. Ever heard yeah. the term malignant hypothermia? Um, no, what is it? Don't worry. Don't worry, good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're not on any... So I've determined it's safe to give to the patient now so I can move towards administration. Try and explain it to the patient because a lot of the drugs, I don't know how to use them. So walk it through what they need to do. Um, when it's in your lungs, it'll give you that pain relief. If you need more pain relief, I'll put my finger yeah, there, you yeah. put your finger over that. They yeah. obviously taught you well last time. Yeah, um, when you breathe on it, it goes into your lungs, you get the pain relief. Um, so I need you to um, basically breathe more as it hurts more. Yeah, I'll good. go get all our truck and, and gear ready and we'll take Sorry you into Sorry if I wasted your time, but if it's just a pick, that's good. No worries, Jen. All right.